All right, hey guys, this is Anna Kate. This is Casey from Advanced Chiropractic, and we're here to go over pain management, um, give you guys some self-assessment tools at home that you can do to kind of figure out what's going on. If you have back pain, knee pain, shoulder pain, all the above, um, kind of help you figure out what's going on. Because a lot of times if you have pain directly in the back, it's not actually caused by your back, it's caused by something else. So we're here today to show you some self-assessment tools at home that you can use, and then some exercises to help you then correct those issues. So, over to Casey, you wanna tell about yourself, what yeah. you do? So yeah, my name is Casey Holt. I'm a doctor of chiropractic. I own Advanced Chiropractic. I've been there almost three years now. Um, I specialize, I used to say um, athletes, but it's more active individuals just trying to, whether, you know, increase performance or just stay healthy for the long term and uh, stay in shape. So at my office, um, you know, it's not your typical chiropractic besides the adjustments we do. A lot of soft tissue work like grasping, cupping, uh, dry needling, which is my favorite. Um, and uh, also in our assessments, we do functional movement screens. Um, like Anna K said, we want to identify on what's causing the pain, not just like where it hurts. All right, so if you're having shoulder pain, this is a really, really simple test to determine whether your pain may be caused from either a thoracic mobility or a shoulder mobility issue. So first off, we're gonna get Anna Kate here to do a little quarter squat for us against the wall. She's gonna flatten her entire spine from her head all the way to her tailbone against the wall, leaving no spaces. So the second part is we're gonna bring our arms up, we're gonna touch here, and then I'm just gonna have you try to flatten your arms against the wall without extending your spine. So I don't know if you can see this, but Anna Kate, is pretty short there. So she probably has a mobility issue that we need to address first before we get into any type of stability issue. Now let's say, let's, let's cheat. I'm gonna allow you to extend here. Perfect. Um, so this means mobility isn't the issue. So in treatment, I'm not, I'm probably not gonna do a lot of adjusting with her. It's gonna be more rehab based. So to test for uh, stability, I like to use, um, or I, I just like to watch her first of all, do shoulder abduction. So I would probably have like um, like a sports bra or a tank top to where we can see um, her shoulder blades move. But I'm just gonna have her go up and slowly back down, back and forth. And if I can see like some shaking or loss of control with her scapula, sometimes it'll just kind of dump into the rib cage. That's a good sign that he, she has a stability issue which is solved with um, you know, DNS or just some strengthening exercises, so. All right, so the most common mobility restriction I see with people that have shoulder pain is just a lack of thoracic extension or her mid-back extension. So one of the easiest and most effective ways is to just get on a foam roller. And I like to use foam rollers, not really as a roller, but just um, a fulcrum. So we're gonna have her just find a spot where she feels like it's stiff in her mid back. And she's just gonna kind of float over that roller until she doesn't go anymore. Notice how she's not rolling and then she's gonna curl up all the way like this. So I'm just gonna have her do that back and forth five to 10 times. And then we're gonna find a different spot. So maybe move it up or down on your back. And then we're just gonna do the same exact thing. So um, this you'll, you'll notice like an, an immediate difference. Usually like we'll have her redo the um, wall angel and it'll be a little bit better. It may not be perfect, um, but this is a easy way um, to improve that and hopefully get out of shoulder pain. All right, so. If she passes the wall angel and we know it's not a mobility issue, we're gonna focus on stability. So there's a million and one ways to improve your shoulder stability. I really like wall slides and wall clocks though. So um, Anna Kate's gonna grab a band and she's going to start in this position here with her elbows kind of um, tucked like this and focus on keeping her shoulder blades uh, kind of tucked into a rib cage. And then what we're gonna do is we're just going to bring that out into a Y while still focusing on keeping your uh, shoulder blades kind of down and back and scooped in. And then we're just gonna go back and forth like that. So she should really be feeling a bunch of muscles light up through here. And 
and that looks really good. All right guys, so now we're gonna address knee pain. Um, knee pain is tricky. It can be caused by a bunch of different things, but most commonly it's either due to deficient ankle dorsiflexion, um, ankle, or sorry, hip mobility, or uh, hip or glute stability activation, whatever you wanna call it. So the six inch step down kind of tests all three, which is why I always, always, always have my knee patients do this. So first we're gonna start and actually come out uh, a little bit forward. And um, actually, I'm gonna have you go both feet right here. There you go. And so, what we're gonna do, we're gonna, which one are you gonna test? This one. Right here. Okay. So, what she's gonna do is she is going to keep this knee straight, and you're just gonna do a couple heel taps for me, okay, while stabilizing right there. Good. So, what we're watching for, first off, does this knee cave in? If it does, that means that she may not have enough stability in her hip complex right here um, or in the glutes. The second thing we're looking for is her heel lifting up off the mat or the box or whatever you want to do. If it does, that means her ankle is not dorsiflexing enough and we need to address that if she's having problems there. And then if she just looks like she's flexing her back over to try to um, achieve a heel tap, that means that she's probably not moving well through her hips and we need to tackle that. Okay, so in that six inch step down test, we'll say that uh, Anna Kate had a knee valgus or knee cave. So we're gonna need to focus on activating, getting those hips a little bit stronger. So this is my all time favorite exercise for that. So what Anna Kate's gonna do is get into kind of a side plank position here and then a clamshell position here. So her knees are, are bent. Her uh, ankles are together. And what she's gonna do is she's gonna lift her hips off the ground by putting pressure into that outside knee. She's gonna lift this leg up here. We're gonna hold that for about three seconds. And Anna Kate can probably tell you she's already feeling a nice burn in her left hip. And then she's going to slowly lower herself to the ground and just focus on that eccentric control. So do that one more time for me. Good. And I promise you, you will feel a great burn here. Mm -hmm. All right, so say when she's doing that six inch step down test, her ankle was lifting off the ground, indicating a dorsiflexion restriction. This is a super easy and effective ankle mobilization you can do by yourself. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna do both hands over to the top of your knee there, and you're going to just push your knee over your toes. And the key here is to not let that heel come up. So she actually has pretty good ankle, ankle dorsiflexion, um, but if you feel like you can't get very far, that's okay. That's just the best you can do. Um, so really just stress that, go to the end range. Let's do that on the other foot. Good, and then one more thing, make sure that your knee is going straight over your toes and it's not coming in or it's not going out. So just in that side, plane here. All right, so if you're having back pain, um, we're gonna wanna look first to see whether she stabilizes well through here. Um, either, you know, if it's a like a core strength issue, sometimes it could just be a breathing issue. Um, but I like to start with the modified curl up. Um, so she's gonna uh, straighten one leg, keep one knee bent, and then what I'm gonna have you do, let's just go arms crossed here, or you can go uh, hands behind your head, whatever is more comfortable for you. And you're just gonna curl up. You're gonna leave this part of your low back against the floor, and then you're just gonna kinda tuck your chin to your chest, and then you're gonna hold. So if I immediately see a lot of shaking going on here, that is a good sign we need to work on core strength. She should be able to hold this close to 10 seconds without any notable shaking um, or loss of control going on. Um, if she has a perfect test here, then it may be um, a either like lumbar spine, uh, mobility issue or hip mobility issue, which we'll have to break down in a separate test, but that's a good starting point for you. Okay, so we're gonna kind of test more her um, low back mobility here. So what I'm just gonna have you do is do a simple toe touch, keep your knees straight, we're gonna go all the way down, try to touch your toes. So what I'm looking for is like a uniform curve here, first of all, um, and then if she is not able to touch her toes, 
Um, we're going to look for either a hamstring uh, mobility issue, a hip mobility issue, or it could be that she just doesn't have enough flexion in her low back. All right, so we're also gonna wanna test her extension as well. So you're gonna go arms overhead like this, keep her knees straight, and then you're just gonna lean all the way back here. She should have about 30 degrees of extension here. And once again, we're looking, is it a nice uniform curve? Is there a big hinge here? Which she actually kind of does. Um, if she does not pass that test, then it's either um, due to a low back um, extension mobility deficit, could also be hip extension, could also be uh, shoulder extension. So another thing you kind of have to break down, but that's a good test to see if she is mobility deficient. All right, so if Indicate doesn't pass the modified curl up, we're gonna go into the classic dead bug. So legs here, arms up in the air, First off, I'm gonna just have her do some basic belly breathing. So just try to put pressure into my fingers here, kind of all around her core, pushing out good. Once she masters this, and sometimes it takes a long time to get this, we don't wanna move past that if she is not able to create pressure through abdomen. If she is, however, we're gonna make this test a little bit harder. So what she's gonna do is she's going to extend her leg and opposite arm at the same time without lifting her low back off the floor, and then we're just gonna alternate like that. Very simple exercise, um, but it is my all-time favorite core exercise to do. All right, so if she isn't able to touch her toes, like I said, it's either um, a lumbar flexion issue, it's a hamstring issue, or it could be a hip issue. Most commonly, it is the, the hamstrings. I don't see too many uh, lumbar flexion issues. So we're gonna address the best way to stretch hamstrings, which I like to stretch them dynamically. So what we're gonna do is we're going to elevate her foot either on a stair step or box or whatever. You're gonna put your hands on your hips, and then you're just gonna uh, do a hip, a hip hinge there. So we're just bending at the hip. We're not rounding the low back back and forth like that and what I want to see is about 10 times with her foot just straight and since the hamstring is kind of like a cylinder we're going to rotate her foot out into some hip external rotation and work some stretches in there and then we're going to internally rotate the hip and work it there as well so we just don't miss any parts of the hamstring because it is made up of two muscle All right, so if she doesn't pass the multi-side mental extension test, a lot of times we're just really deficient with extension in our low back. As humans, most of the time we are in a chronic state of flexion, whether you're sitting, um, even if you're standing, uh, or whatever. So we wanna make sure that we get a ton of extension throughout our day. So the best way to do that is with the McKenzie press up. So she's gonna leave her hips on the ground. She's completely relaxed from her waist all the way down. You're just gonna press up with your arms, extend your elbows. Give me a little more extension there to get in. And then we're just gonna go back and forth about 20 times. So um, this may be uncomfortable for you, may even cause a little bit of pain. And it's because we just aren't giving ourselves enough extension and our body is not used to that movement. Most often, after about 10 reps, you're gonna start it to feel like it's loosening up, it's a lot less painful. And when she gets up after about 20, 90% of the time, you feel a lot better. So, highly recommend this exercise. So that's it guys, those are some three really basic um, pain spots that people have a hard time managing and it might actually scare them away from getting into an exercise program because they have this chronic pain, but really exercise can help correct these things. Um, so if anyone would like to see Casey in person, we're located in Wichita, Kansas. Your website and Instagram if you want to give that information out. Yeah, so um, you can book online or give us a call or you want to do our website is advanced Cairo ICT. Dot com phone number 316-202-0045 also feel free to follow us on instagram it's at advanced cairo ict post a lot of exercise stuff some funny videos a little bit of everything but definitely give us a follow
me and Casey work closely together. If I have clients that have nagging pain that we can't correct in the gym, send them to Casey. He does body screens. Um, sometimes he even uses like e stem needling, like he talked about before, to help correct some pain. Um, and then we always want to find the the issue at hand and correct that with using exercises in the gym. So we collab quite a bit with our, our businesses.